make an observation? Sure, sure. Um, when you said about adding a wiki layer to things that the GLAMs are already doing, that's in fact what within our own GLAM we are doing. We add a wiki layer to whatever it is that's happening around the library. If it's an exhibition, we enhance the articles or upload some content. Um, if it's some other activity that we've got going on, we're not trying to make it an end in itself. It's very much about adding it to you know, what else is library business. And it's easier. Yeah. Sorry, no, you, you had a question? Yeah. Well, you know, it can be through, true that the type of projects you want to do is only depends on the people that are around. You know, if you have good documentation on how other stuff works, people can train themselves. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, you know, the Glen Wiki Tools set, one of the, the sheets that came along in a lot of presentations is let's copy, you know, let's duplicate Mark and Dahmer's. Sure. So, uh, uh, um, uh, so I, I don't, yes, it's, it's what you're suggesting is if, if, if you want quick wins or if you're just starting out, but if you have a longer term relationship with Glenn, mm -hmm. then I think that you should have to have access to the tools to learn more sure. things. But you'll need a volunteer there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, the, the problem here, it's, it's like, I can't have a mid, my, my appointment is, I can't have a mid-term relationship with someone when we don't have a volunteer there because if it's a paid it's it's a paid only relationship uh, a my times it's 40 hours a week 50 60 but it, it's just like you can't have you can scale that relationship because otherwise you'll need like five people working for glam in your chapter which is in my opinion not, not good and it's just the other thing it's 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 if you have a volunteer, you'll have a project. If you don't have a volunteer, you probably have a um, one-night shot even, which is also okay, but not a bit. Yeah, but have you documented your pizza, pasta, and rice? Sure, sure, sure. Obviously, obviously, <laughs> documentation. It's it's obviously inside here for scaling. It's it's a basic thing. It's yeah. Uh, we have, uh, for example, with libraries, we are working for with for more than 100 libraries, <laughs> and in some of them. Now we don't even go to the to do the first visit. It's just like they just take the documentation or phone the the next librarian and they just start. Yeah. And it's like okay. And do you also facilitate um, uh, uh, those contacts between those libraries? Sure, sure. We have a public list with every everyone's emails, and we highlight. My my job is highlighting what which are the fancy libraries doing fancy things, and we yeah. try to highlight them. And we empower them to say, why don't you go to that library conference to talk about that wiki project. It's not me going like the crazy wiki and going always this time, wiki, wiki. It's just like them talking about the regular thing uh, between their librarian things. Yeah. And, um, is it okay to agree with you also? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I wanted to, to um, endorse your, your points about the importance of mapping both the wiki capacity and the glance capacity, not just capacity, interests, passions. What do they care about? What do they want? What do we care about? What do we want? The fact that the, the core fact about volunteer labor is that volunteers do what they are passionate about, what they're interested in, and they tend not to do what they're not interested in or what is not fun or you know. So you have to know your community, your volunteer base, to know what you can offer, as you said, uh, the fruit or the pasta. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it was a co metaphorically complicated talk. <laughs> but yeah, you know, maybe you can only offer a punk band, uh, but then you need to find a partner who's interested in punk consoles. Um, and it, so it should be okay to say, you know what, you're great, we're great, but we can't work together today, maybe next year. That should be an acceptable result of first contact with a clan, it, and everybody would be better for it. it would, it's much better than embarking on a project That's, that would fail, that would frustrate everyone, everybody would feel it was a waste of time. That was one of our learning curves. It, it has, uh, we spent two or three years for taking that decision, like, oh, probably we don't need to start something. Yeah, and, and of course the temptation is great, especially when you're starting out, because, oh my god, there's a museum that's willing to talk to us. You know, uh, obviously we need to work with them. That that may or may not be the case. I also wanted to endorse your point about the importance of of, of uh, 
sustaining efforts by always involving new people. So Alex was an early uh, articulate speaker for GLAM in Catalonia. And it, the natural thing would have been to just keep on sending Alex to all those meetings uh, until he died. Uh, because eventually when you don't sleep, you know, you die. Um, but, but of course, the, the, the wiser thing to do is to make sure that Alex always takes someone else with him who has not done this before. And firstly, listen and learn. And the second or third time they go, they deliver some of the talking. And the fifth time they go together, they do the talking and Alex observes and gives them feedback. And the sixth time they go alone. That's how you create sustainability. And I wanted to add, that's also important on the GLAM partner side. You shouldn't have just one person on the other side, and if, if you, should, you should resist the GLAM's, uh, again, natural tendency to just have, you know, uh, all right, you seem to know what those Wikipedians are talking about. You handle it, you know? Again, a very natural organizational tendency. Uh, it's, it's, it seems in the short term the most convenient. You know, that person just knows what's going on, and they do the Wiki thing. But it's always important to have some redundancy. Uh, that person may leave your organization, that person you know, may, may fall ill, or whatever. You need to have additional people, even if they're not at the forefront, involved, knowing more or less what's going on, at least socially knowing the Wikipedians involved, so that both sides have a little bit of redundancy, and as you say, the ability to mentor others, to expand it to another department of the institution, etc. So these are really good lessons I'm endorsing from my perspective, having observed other projects as well. And I forgot, I, I, will, I could keep talking for hours. <laughs> I forgot one thing we, we, we didn't mention. GlamWiki is not the same in 2015 that it was in 2012. We, we were a hype for some time for, for, the, for the chapters and for media and PR, but we are not anymore. So whenever you're a small organization and you run your first editathon, it's like, I want to go, I want to go. I want. When you have several, A, you don't have PR anymore, and B, your own volunteers don't want to go that, they're not that willing, like, yes, your first editathon in that country. I'm sorry, it's, it's cold today. I don't want to go, sorry. Or last minute cancel, all these things. So you need to get uh, the best of your band at the beginning, because later on you won't have all these people in the band, like, like you were mentioned. Mm -hmm. And this is something that it, it's happening now to us, because people is like, oh, someone else will go. You send to the mailing list, hey, we need a volunteer for that workshop. <laughs> workshop canceled. <gasps> no, it's OK. Mm -hmm. it, it happened in the Netherlands too, to be honest. You know, when I when I began as a GLAM coordinator, we had a working group, <coughs> a work group on GLAM coordination, and within two months after I started, it fell apart. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, but now you have Sebastian, so yes, he, he can go, and um, it, it took a while to to get the energy back in and to, to have other people get involved again in those projects. As, as an employer, it, it has happened to me also, and we, were, we made a clear statement of my position, description of job was written by the volunteers, so it's like my role is not doing workshops just because no one else wants to go. Probably it's the last option when you have a last minute cancel, but it's like Tuesday morning, oh yeah, St. Alex. I'm, I'm not a pizza delivery guy, it's just like, uh, if there's no volunteer, there's no workshop. Yeah. And well, yeah. I, I want. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I'll sit down. Sure. Uh, I just had one one quick comment following up on what you said about what we're doing anyway. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite gland projects uh, costs zero dollars. That's not why it's my favorite project. <laughs> uh, is it's a nice <laughs> One of my favorite projects is the virtual reference desk. Um, I don't know if it's been mentioned before, but uh, uh, university libraries, national libraries have a reference desk, right? With reference librarians, you walk up to them, you have a research question, they employ their expertise and they get you materials, citations, photos, whatever you need. This is already happening. That's a core service of the library. The amazing project is creating a wiki page called the virtual National Library Reference Desk. And all the library needs to offer is one reference librarian, ideally two, considering my previous point, but some staff person who will devote idle time, time when the reference desk is 
not active, or there's no one currently wanting their attention, to look at that page and get queries from Wikipedians who are asking the exact same question that someone could ask you in person. I need sources on this. I'm looking for the death date of this person. And answer it. Just do that core library function that you're already doing, but post the results on the wiki. Or oh, you could yes. ask a librarian. Yeah. <laughs> It's from the perspective of out. that works in the Hebrew Wikipedia, yeah. where, you, where that project comes from. Yeah. Because the National Library of Israel has responsibility for the Hebrew language and for 95% of people who are looking at that wiki. Yeah. In the Australian context and other countries that don't necessarily own the language, mm -hmm. uh, working at the National Library of Australia, uh, I've tried to institute that system, but they said we're not going to be able to justify the staff time of our Australian staff looking at the English Wikipedia, <laughs> yeah. answering questions that are not necessarily relevant to our content or our, or our citizens or our subjects. So we put links on the talk page, on the Wiki Project <coughs> Australia talk page. You know, every article has a talk page, Wiki Project Food, Wiki Project, Wiki Project Australia. Do you want to know more about this topic? Ask a librarian, and that takes you to the National Library website. Yeah, it absolutely. would be much better if we could get those libraries onto Wiki. But this was a, a lower level, a lower level difficulty of sending Wikipedians off to the library instead. That yeah. all depends on your point of view, because for the um, the libraries, it's much better that those questions get funneled through yeah. their so normal they count their statistics, system. Right? Well, just so that someone gets pinged that there is a question and you get answered in in a reasonable time frame, yeah. not just when someone's got some spare time on the desk, but you actually get treated the same way as a, a real life customer who walked up to the desk. So. I would like to leave with just making the point of our suggestion that these kinds of strategies that would involve the, the people in their work could be somehow listed and developed further. So, uh, like, like, there's a term for that, that you do it in as part of your work to edit Wikipedia. So, um, yeah. I don't know, well, if there are probably some, some levels of uh, worries or conflict of interest, but, but very slight, I'd say. Worries from the computer side, but another worries from the library side mm -hmm. about the fear of having people from the internet asking us questions, even from the library community, so enough. Mm -hmm. Just but, that. but things so develop. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There's also a bit of a jurisdiction thing in library land because um, taking my customers? Not exactly, but um, you know, I'm a pretty good librarian. I can answer a lot of questions about Australian things, but I would hope that if your question is something to do with American law, that I'm not your only source <laughs> that you're going to go to. You know, so we do actually highly specialise around um, particular countries. And that's that's where I mean about a jurisdiction thing. We would want the best person to be answering the, the question, the most relevant person. So. The Ask a Librarian links that um, Liam's mentioned mm -hmm. work very well for us because they also identify if it's New South Wales, you'll get through to us at State Library of New South Wales, so you will truly get to the right experts. So it's kind of funneling it through so that you're going to get the best outcome. I would like to mention a Dutch uh, a national library uh, question answering project. It's not a product yet. But the approach is to try to be present there where the public and the questions are, such as Facebook, Twitter, and even a real time looking at uh, television or, or hearing radio programs and trying to push content in a rather yeah, subtle way into discussions and try to uh, yeah, have reactions and provoke questions. But uh, what is mentioned here is the same um, tension between who is owning this, who is responsible for this, uh, where should the funding and uh, the people come from. But I'm so, so I can tell you that in the example I was uh, alluding to, which is, which is the National Library of Israel on the Hebrew Wikipedia, the National Library is in fact counting and monitoring yeah. the usage of that service. They're treating it as part of their core work, mm -hmm. so that they don't lose the reference traffic. They're, they're counting that as this is also something that our reference desk has served 
And as you say, it's the exact same uh, service, whether the person showed up in person in Jerusalem or whether they're uh, elsewhere in Israel or whether they're like me, contributing to the Hebrew Wikipedia from all over the world. I don't have access to the library, physical access. Uh, so I, I applaud your, your intention of, of pushing the library service outside the walls of the library. Uh, that's that's it's old what thinking. In fact, librarianship is all about. Building thinking. Yeah. But my hope is here now the public library is uh, integrated with the national library. Yeah. So that would be the momentum to join forces. Then yeah. the national I, I, I think a lot can be done. And be, yeah. beyond that wiki project, which uh, for those of you less less versed in the, the ways of the wiki, wiki projects are kind of a back backstage thing that in fact a lot of Wikipedians are not aware of, not to mention non-Wikipedians. Whereas most wikis have some kind of generic reference desk page, uh, a Wikipedian reference desk, not what I was describing. That's just for, for asking random questions and people who are knowledgeable or who tend to monitor the reference desk are answering. So uh, if I were you, I would make sure, for example, that the, the regulars on the English Wikipedia reference desk are aware that you're offering this expertise on Australian topics, and they should refer people to you. And again, there are volunteers who would be happy to do that. They just know about a few offerings, you know, on Dutch matters, on Australian matters, and on Renaissance art. We have these resources. They would actually be happy to make the, make the matches yeah, and bring, bring the, the people who need the information to your resource, which is maybe harder to find without that connection. So do people have other um, suggestions or ideas? Because this is very much about what's the next logical steps for Glam Wiki as a movement to, you know, where, where are the gaps, what are the wicked problems that we need to, to be solving? Have you got any other? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to finish that. We are, yes, going, to finish. We are going to finish in 10 minutes. Okay. Go down for a photograph. And, from my experience, we as a, not as a movement, my local experience, we are moving a lot from M to L. Libraries are actually a public service and we are really successful with libraries and not that much with museums because museums, once the content donation is done or, or the artist entry is done, they don't will. It's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm also, I'm already on Wikipedia, just go away. And, um, but with librarians, we get uh, territorial coverage. This small town has a, a public library and probably not a Wikimedian. Um, we get, uh, obviously, territorial professional things. Um, we, the librarians has the, the public service, I don't know if it's, this is the word in English, uh, the public service, uh, civil servant will. Like they want to 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 serve the others. Yeah. As a museum sector, is not that clear by the phone their description of job. They and have an ethic of public service. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, ethic of public service. This is really uh, for us is really a, a great thing. And, and not they not know a feeling of ownership of the information. Yeah. Museums do often. Yeah. And librarians want to. And <laughs> and their users. Are our users, are people, users of a public library, are users who are willing to not discover knowledge. Probably it's internet connection, probably it's, it's a newspaper, or probably it's local history. But they know their communities, which is really useful for us. One of the things we tell them normally, it's like, you know who's the butterfly lovers of your town, because you know your community. Teach him, her to edit Wikipedia. The, you're still in a hobby, like, like you said some, some time ago. And doing these things, we are meeting new Wikimedians and starting new local projects without even uh, being there. And this, for us, is like, wow, it's, it's great and, and it's scalable again. And with museums, you need to have the, the Wikipedian in residence model and, and something like it's not... If you invest time, it works. If you don't invest time, it doesn't work. And with libraries, without investing, without investing that amount of time, it's, it's, we get better results. Mm -hmm. So we are moving our efforts to there. I could feedback 
some, I'm sorry, I've been talking a lot, but uh, I could feedback something from the previous session of the, the gland therapy session. Um, that's what it was called. Um, yeah. Where uh, one of the one of the issues raised was uh, frustrations from the gland side in interacting with Wikipedia, and we we mentioned that by even by talking about a partnership with Wikipedia, we're already setting people up to be frustrated, because for gland institutions, when you say partnership, you are saying that there will be someone on the other side who is accountable to anything that happens from that side. And if there's any issues, you pick up the phone and you talk to your partner, contact person, and they figure it out. That's very much not what partnering with Wikipedia looks like. right? And, and when you are a museum in the Netherlands, you are partnering maybe with Wikimedia Nederland, which is not Wikipedia, as, as you will discover sooner or later. right? Uh, so, so there, there is a lot of room for improvement, I think, in how uh, even that partnership, the concept of partnership, is uh, sold, is, is negotiated. It's all about expectation setting, and we Wikipedians need to do a better job, I think, because we can't expect a museum to understand what it means to partner with Wikipedia. We can't We've expect them to way, anticipate though. what? We've come a long way, though, in the, in the five years of, of that. Well, yeah, we started with working with cultural institutions was framed as content liberation. Right. Yeah, I remember. So to, to now be framing it as cultural partnerships is yes. not ideal, but it's significantly better. No, no, I, I'm not arguing against the word <laughs> partnership, but we need to, to break it down into, to, for example, before you sign anything, before you donate the content, uh, your partner needs to know that some of those images could get deleted. It needs to, to be spelled out in advance. It will save a lot of heartache later. And, and, you know, and that, those, that those deletions may sometimes actually be correct because there may be some copyright issue that the museum was not aware of and that some Wikipedia found out. And, yeah. Well, one, one thing I really learned from, I used to be a Wikipedia in, in, in residence in this very building and I gave like, well, countless amounts of workshops and things like that. And at the beginning, I thought I'm going to teach you know people of these glands how to edit Wikipedia because they want to be Wikipedians. And at the end, I discovered actually what I'm doing is not learning them to edit Wikipedia, but understand Wikipedia by editing. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And I think this is exactly the step that you're referring to. That you know, because the thing is, many glands have this have a very uh, you know a very common uh, mission or vision that we have. But when you talk to them, it tends to say at the level of, oh, this is wonderful, and this wonderful world of free knowledge, and it's awesome, and oh, wonderful, we love you so much. And then we start, and then I say, okay, that's fine, I'm going to show you how to edit the template and how to deal with the community. And then they're like, what, this is, this, oh my god, this is terrible, this, oh my, and you know, that's like, but it's a very important step, because if they never get to that step, they, they don't learn that, you know, there's actually people there, and it's not all fairy tales. There's actually quite some hard work involved before you're actually uh, uh, getting, you know, into this, 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 this partnership. Actually, I would like to well, continue both of these. That, um, that not only take for granted what Wikipedia, Wikimedia is, but we can also uh, develop some um, uh, stra strategies uh, or ways of working or um, not Especially, well, I, I refer to the to the um, institutional account discussion that uh, that we as a glam community can perhaps agree on some of the practicalities that then are reflected. Well, that that are used with glams, so that they don't necessarily have to. Uh, dive into the shark tank and be eaten alive first. Um, but, or that we can, well, the, yeah. if only the, well, this spe is... Speaking of sharks, yeah. one, one implication of setting expectations mm -hmm. is making your partner understand that the community has all shapes and sizes mm -hmm. in it and has over-eager Wikipedians who are too quick to delete or too quick to, to mm -hmm. shout conflict of interest and they may be mistaken, mm -hmm. and that you can have a conversation with them and convince them that mm -hmm. they are mistaken. That's often not seen, you know, mm -hmm. people respond very 
strongly to that first uh, setback, or rejection, or, or warning template, or something. Whereas we Wikipedians know that you know sometimes it's, it's just a mistake. Something, some, someone was just too quick on the mouse, mm -hmm. and you can talk about it and undo it. Mm -hmm. Nothing is lost, and everything is okay. It takes a little patience. Someone mentioned patience already, uh, right? It takes patience, and it takes, as as you said, hi, understanding Wikipedia for an institutional partner is far more important than contributing personally to Wikipedia. Um, I would say that explaining wiki culture, explaining copyright concerns, explaining why does someone from another country delete my picture, what does he know about my country's copyright law, explaining those questions is far more important than ever even getting them to edit. And it may not even be the best use of everybody's time for an expert curator or Egyptologist or whatever to edit. It may be a much better use of everybody's time to pair them with a Wikipedian who is into Egyptology, for example. This is something Liam did in his first residency already, called it matchmaking, right? Uh, to, to match interested and excited Wikipedians with curators and experts, that would be a best use of everybody's time and much less frustration all around. That's wonderful. Well, I was just thinking about what someone said, I think it was before, that people don't know, that, um, often don't know about Wikipedia, even Wikipedians. It strikes me that we should be really using that as a focus, those as a focus group for solving these problems and for directing <coughs> people in much the same way that ask a librarian is or the tea house is or something else. When an article is created and admit by newbie and immediately uh, slated for deletion, why can't this be asked of the project, the wiki project that covers that topic because those people, as, as, as Alex is saying, are interested in that topic and are, are kind of focusing and can, can consider whether it's reasonable because I've seen this happen a number of times with new editors going through to create, a, a create an article and put it up and it's whack in it and it ruins everything and there's, it's, I don't see, I think we really ought to be saying to the people who are deleting things, well, they are the, just the people buying them, could you please, if you think there's a, um, a chance that this is, there's a goodwill behind this, but lack of experience or not enough some things, could you please direct it to the relevant wiki project, rather than just delete it? Because I think the wiki project people could say, oh, that's interesting, or it just needs this, more than, yes, just delete it. It's, it's something desirable, but probably not doable on wiki things because the deletion, the speed deletion people are, are the same everywhere. But uh, one of the tips I gave to Glams is A, don't start editing about an obscure topic. It's like edit about your favorite band. It's nothing to do to the museum. It's like A, you will discover the joy of editing Wikipedia if you like your topic. It's not your job thing, uh, your job extension. It's, just edit your favorite novel, band, or whatever, and they understand what's a Wikipedian. And if it's a highlight topic that probably may not apply on English Wikipedia because almost done already, <laughs> but if, if, if you're a, a non-English Wikipedia language, like, you have plenty of articles for being created yet, and they feel okay if they start with an article which is not an obscu obscure topic like a music band or something like that, and this way, it's, it's a tip we use for avoiding this speedy deletion thing on with early ones, users. Those, those ones are the ones I've found get the most deleted because someone comes with their band or their favourite small obscure thing and some Wikipedian who's deletion focused will, will say no. No, it's just like you, you need to take like a, 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 top, a popular topic that it's not yet written. That, that's hard to create on English Wikipedia, yeah. but not on the other ones. Uh, it's one, one, one thing I, I usually um, advise people is that it's, uh, they should write about people that are already dead. Yes. And they should, because that has advantages that you, for some reason, uh, topics that are, you know, a hundred years ago, if you have like a painter from the 17th century that has made, you know, has, has, has you know, uh, painted one, one picture, it's completely fine on Wikipedia, but if you have, you know, uh, a fashion designer, that's living right now, it gets elite because it's spam or something. So I usually say like edit, you know, people that are already dead. Plus, 
it gives you the very big advantage that you can actually use images from that painter instead of you know mm -hmm. having yeah. copyright uh, problems. We've run out of time, but we haven't run out of space for the conversation. So there will be the next session tomorrow where they'll be picking up the strategy discussion and they'll be using the same etherpad. So if you didn't get a chance to ask your question or say something provocative, put it in there and let Stefan take it over.